dodge bullets, baby. This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. There it is. Doyle's got it. Eastgate steps into poker history. This is the greatest sport in the world. As day three continues, some of the most feared pros in the game are moving right along. Strap in, baby. Including a pair of awesome Aussies. After winning three bracelets this year, Jeff Lissandro has locked up the 2009 Player of the Year award and has put everyone on notice that he's the man to beat. You gotta mess with me in order to win it. But right across the table sits the 2005 main event champion who would love nothing more than to win it all again. If someone said to me, you'll never be able to win another tournament again if you win the main event. No, I think it's a fair trade. Tonight, this good old rumble from down under continues from the main event. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy! Welcome back to the 40th Annual World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Along with Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Here on day three of the 2009 main event, chipping up is everyone's goal. And some big names are doing just that, including a contingent of athletes, actors, and, of course, world champions. Oh, my God. Shut down. So maybe who better than you, Phil? Perhaps not better, but certainly the youngest main event champion ever. 2008 winner Peter Eastgate is still in the hunt, as is 2004 main event champ Greg Raymer. Meanwhile, still sitting at our featured table is Joe Hashem. Joe Hashem put Australia on the poker map in 2005, and now four years later, fellow Aussie Jeff Lissandro clearly is on the road to greatness. Jeff, how much did you win total for the three bracelets? About 800. Oh, okay. Oh, that's I thought maybe it was over a million. Maybe a subtle little jab from Joe, who won 7.5 million when he took home the main event title. Lissandra may have won three bracelets this year, but it is that one, the main event bracelet, that the 1,400 or so remaining players are after. All right, let's get underway here on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Camp. Tad Moselle looks down at Ace King offsuit. Mazel got a degree in business administration at Columbia College in Missouri. He's going to raise the action to 5,200. The blind's at 1,000, 2,000. Hashem, ace king of hearts. Hashem did some modeling work in college. I had some feelers myself, but uh, I had no interest. <laughs> a re-raise to 15,000 from Hashem on Drew Dukoski with pocket aces. Dukoski is self-employed. I've been self-employed a lot, Lon. That's code for sitting on your couch. He is all in for his last 7,300. Lissandro in the big blind with King 8 off. He will not play. So the raise back to Moselle. Call. He makes a call for 9,800 more. So Dukoski trying to triple up with aces. Actually, Dukoski invests in racehorses. Good luck, buddy. Check. Moselle checks dark. Here's the flop. 7-5 Trey. Dukoski's aces are still good. Dukoski in great shape to triple up. Check, check. check. Turn card now. 8 of hearts. Dukoski still good. Hashem with a flush draw. Moselle drawing dead. Check. Check. Moselle checks again. Hashem on the draw checks as well. Dukoski still sitting pretty. He's got to dodge a heart now. River card is a heart. Hashem hits the heart flush. Dukoski will be eliminated. Still action between check. Moselle and Hashem. Moselle checks. 15,000. Hashem bets 15,000. And Dukoski figures that's bad news. Fold. Moselle gets out of the way. Hashem shows the flush. Dukoski turns over his aces. And Hashem knocks off another player. World champions go runner, runner. Self-employed horse guys go bye-bye. Joe takes a 57,000 chip pot. I'm making a comeback with my oranges, boys. My first one back. What Joe lacks in orange chips, he makes up for in tenacity. Never count him out. Norman, we often hear the question, is poker a sport? And while many arguments can be made for and against, there are parallels at the very least, among them compelling rivalries. Well, Lon, if I can play, albeit poorly, poker is not a sport. But it does have great rivalries, and we have an intriguing one at the feature table. Two of Australia's finest, Jeffrey Lissandro and Joe Hashem. Lissandro stole some of Hashem's down under thunder with his bracelet hat trick this year, but we'll see if the 2005 world champ can come back swinging in the main event. 
Despite that last win, day three has mostly been swinging and missing for Joe, and having Lissandro here at the table makes the climb that much more difficult, but much more fun for the poker fans. All right, let's get out into the field. Another dynamic duo sharing a table, Phil Ivey and Elke Grispellier. Ivey and Elke? It's like Sinatra and Elvis. Sinatra's the best poker player in the world, and Elvis over there was a one-time great pro video game player. Ivey right now on the verge of eliminating Ricky Forenbach. The river is a brick, and Forenbach is knocked out. Ivey he had the better king. Horenbach says goodbye, and Ivy takes in yet another pot. Phil Ivy takes in another pot, Lon, and does not say a word. And look at all the chips in front of him. It's like Mardi Gras for me. <laughs> That's the last thing that Elke or any of the other players want to see. Ivy with more chips. Another interesting table pairing. Phil Helmuth and Josh Arie, this trash-talking duo, are in a hand together. There have already been two re-raises on the flop. Helmuth way behind a pair of eights, almost drawing dead to Arie's three queens. All right, I'm all in. Phil shoves, and of course, R.E.A. immediately calls. Well, Two-time call bracer winner Josh R.E.A. He's got Phil Helmuth where he wants him. And that would be what Phil's face looks like when he has a 2% hand. And now a 0% chance. R.E.A. will double up through Phil Helmuth. Look, I look kind of stupid there. Kind of. Josh and I have a little history, though. The last time we played a big pot, you showed me a bluff. Well, this time he showed you the nuts. He probably won't be able to bluff me today. Wow. Phil talks. Josh takes in his chips. Wow. Josh with over 240,000 chips now. Still at table two is Kenny Tran, and he has been joined by a trash talker with an accent, David Devilfish Uliot. Their heads up going to the flop. Uliot leads with ace 10, Tran with 9-5. The flop gives Devilfish top pair. Both these guys have a bracelet, and Devilfish has finished second four times at World Series events. Tran and Uliot both check. Turn card is a deuce of clubs. Tran with a wheel draw. Juliet's still ahead. Kenny Tran bets 9,000. 9, Kenny will try to buy it right here. A little bit of summer, maybe. David's not going to let him. Devilfish has Kenny up against the ropes. River card now is a tray, and Tran hits his five high straight and earns the check mark. Kenny had bet on the come, and the four outer came. And he bets at it 27,000. You know, if I let you all draw me, I'm going to be so sick. Devilfish is going to be so sick now. Yeah. Can he make this call? If he's got a five, I don't want this one showing on TV, okay? Because I played it really bad. Too late, oh. Devilfish. He does make the call with a pair of bases. There's the five. Oh, oh look, he's just going wow. Well. And it is being shown on TV. That's true, it is. That's so sick, huh? Don't worry, Devilfish. Kenny Tran leaves many opponent muttering when the hand is over. It's what he does best. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. 40th Annual Memories. My favorite moment in the World Series has to be winning the main event in 2000. I was the first player to win over a million dollars. Winning didn't change my life instantly. But now, since the poker boom has taken place, I can't walk through one airport without, you know, six people stopping me for an autograph. Winning the main event, it's something that every poker player dreams of. Once you're a world champion, you're always a world champion. Back in the Rio, there is Chris Ferguson, five-time bracelet winner. But right now, his 09 tournament is at stake. He's all in. Eric Vandenberg trying to knock out one of the game's biggest players. But Ferguson's ace-10 leads the king tray. Here's the flop. Chris at risk. The flop is ace, king, ace. That's a pretty good flop for Chris. He hits trips. Turn card now is a seven, and Ferguson will win the hand. Chris remembers losing 35 cents playing poker in fourth grade, and it bothered him. He's made up for it since. Chris with 48,000 chips now. Chris won five bracelets in a four-year span, but he's been dry since 2003. To 95 champ Dan Harrington. He made back-to-back -back main event final tables in 03 and 04, and he'll win this hand. Want to give me a look? Now you know the old story. You want to know what the hand is, give me $5. You want the truth, pay me $10. You're gonna give me and if you give me $25, I'll show you what I had. I go for the five-buck deal, kid. It's a bargain. I mean, why would you pay $25 to see his hand when he'll just tell you what it is for five? Across the room, the man who won it all in 2004, Greg Raymer, in a lot of trouble. His pocket tens have one more chance to crack the aces of Thomas Coral. If you peek at the first card and it's not a 10, drop it. The river card is not a 10, and Raymer is gone. Uh, I just got to figure out oh, there's a better way to play that. Yeah. How are you doing? I just got knocked out. <laughs> what? 
Not, a, not the best time to ask. How you doing? I just got knocked out. Raymer was a two-year wonder in the main event, winning it all in 2004 and 25th in 05. Since then, no luck in the big one, but a lot of final tables and bracelet events. Meanwhile, actor Jason Alexander could be in a little trouble of his own. He was just raised by Christian Heisch on a flop of 6-8 deuce. You rolling? I may be going home. All in. Jason re-raises all in. Alexander has a good size stack, but Heisch has got a bigger one. Jason trying to play the role of intimidator, and it works. Heisch folds. There you go. Jason set Heisch up for a Kodak moment only to have him retreat. I wonder if he TiVo's Seinfeld reruns. <laughs> Who doesn't? Let's get back to the feature table. Did Hashem just shortchange the pot? Oh, no, I didn't. I'll put 200 Annie. Annie's 300. Maybe Lissandro did, not Annie. Let's check the tape. Why don't you get a discount? Past champion and all that, you know? Yeah. Lissandro, you remember, was involved in Antigate with Prahlad Friedman, a discussion that almost came to blows a few years ago. Lissandro with pocket fives. He is under the gun. Where is the gun? It's above him, I assume. Lissandro calls for 2,000. Joe Asham, Jack Deuce of Hearts. That's hardly worth an ante. He does fold. Action on Joey Lusby. 9-6 offsuit from the small blind. He's a 43-year-old firefighter from Kentucky. And he calls for 1,000 more. Paul Valkenberg with Ace Trey. Valkenberg's nickname is Mr. Dandy. He beat me to it. It's from the Czech Republic. He checks his option. Three to the flop. Six, eight, nine. All spades. Lusby hits two pair. Lissandro now with a straight draw to go with his fives. Valkenberg missed. Lusby checks. If I were Lusby, I would have thrown a small bet out there. See where you stand. Valkenberg checks behind. If I were Valkenberg, I just would have gone up from the table right now to save time. Lissandro bets his pair of fives and gut shot 4,500. If I were Lissandro, I would bet 4,500. <laughs> Lusby comes along with his two pair. If I were Lusby, I would have checked raise there, you know, see if Lissandro could stand the heat. Valkenberg retreats. Heads up to the turn. Seven of clubs. Lissandro hits his nine high straight. Lusby checks. If I were Lissandro, I would check here, then bet the river if it's a blank. He does check. His mission is half accomplished. River card is a blank. Lissandro with a check mark. Lusby first to act. He checks. Lissandro's nickname is Iceman. He didn't beat you to it? Yes, he did. Lissandro with 15,000. I'll see what Jeff did there. He puts in a pot sized bed. It looks suspicious, like he's trying to buy it. If I'm Lusby, I'd fold. Then again, I can see their whole cards. <laughs> and Lesby makes the call, and Lissandro straight will win the pot. Nice hand. Gotta win one pot. Sometime. The well has been a bit dry for Jeff here on day three. It's time for the new player of the year to get busy. Three continues at the main event. Let's catch up with Jordan Farmar of the L.A. Lakers at the river with two others. Check. Farmar checks. Michael Jansen follows Check. suit, Check. as does Jay Ginsbach. Almost 67,000 in the pot. Farmar shows king high. Jansen a pair of queens. Ginsbach mucks. Jansen wins. Farmar, the first in history to play an NBA and Dang. NBA D-League game in the same day, now trying to become the first to win an NBA title in the main event in the same year. Elsewhere, Vitaly Lukan has two bracelets, but one foot out the door. All in with King 7. Sean Dorn at risk with pocket aces. Mohamed Moini can knock them both out, but his kings are third best. The turn gives Lukan two ways to make a straight. Lukan's made three final tables here in 2009. He needs a 5 or a 9 to stay alive. Moini can knock Lukan and Dorn out with a king. The river card is a nine. Logan hits the straight. Dorn wins the side pot, so both players at risk survive. I know Lunkin's play good, but I can't tell you how ridiculously good he has run. He should be halfway back to Moscow right now on an Aeroflot flight. <laughs> and coach. Another guy who's running good is Phil Ivey. His table broke, and it looks like he's filled Greg Raymer's seat. He's in a hand right now with Keith Lear. Lear lays it down, and Ivey will scoop those chips. Phil Ivey wins another pot and does not say a word. Sweet. The momentum continues. His former table mate, Elke Grosbelier, probably happy he's sitting elsewhere. But right now, a big decision for most of his chips. Gary Wong pushed all in in what would be the biggest pot of the tournament if Elke calls. Elke does call. 
815,000 chips up for grabs. Wong at risk shows a pair of kings. Elkie, a set of nines to win it. Oh, they are creating a Frankenstein over here. How many chips does Elkie have now? He is the top stack right now with 1.1 million. That's a lot. It is indeed. Elkie mastering this game right now. He has been the master of games for much of his life. And for him, playing the video game StarCraft was just the tip of the iceberg in his gaming career. StarCraft is a real-time strategy game. It's like chess in a way. You have to be thinking really fast because everything happens in real time, so the faster you are, the more action you can make and like, you have an edge on your opponents. When I was 18 years old, I decided to go to Korea to play StarCraft because I heard you can make a living like playing video games. When we play, we go to the finals, a stadium full of 20,000 people watching the game. It was a really good experience, yeah, it was, it was great. StarCraft helped me a lot for poker because there are a lot of skills that are similar in StarCraft. You don't have all the information at the time, which is kind of similar in poker. You kind of have to be one step ahead. So far, like, I feel I've been playing pretty well, but there's like so much poker to be played, and I just try to play my best and see what happens. I haven't played a video game since the 80s when I took on Puggy Pearson, a buck a point in Donkey Kong, and trust me, I put the donkey in Donkey Kong. This chip count brought to you by PokerStars.net. Elkie alone at over a million chips sitting on top. Kenny Tran, we've seen at table two with almost 600,000. Back to the feature table and one of the most intimidating players around, Jeff Lissandro. Hey, job, Puffin stuff. What are you saying, hey, job, Puffin stuff? Wow. Just enjoy that. Still a kid at heart. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Lissandro well, singing HR Puffin stuff is what we call in the business a statistical improbability. Klaus Nielsen looks more like a Smurf in that outfit. He has 8-4 of spades. Well, I have asked the Rio to adjust the thermostat for Mr. Nielsen. He, he does remind me of Gus Hansen and Lex Veldhaus. He'll play any two cards. 31-year-old in his first World Series of Poker with a raise to 5,200. Joe Hashem now with a couple of queens. I read in Joe's new autobiography, Pass the Sugar, that he was captain of the Australian rules football team in elementary school. A re-raise to 15,000. He knows how to be aggressive. Lissandra with pocket kings puts the shades down to get to work. I'm assuming Lissandra was a ruck rover in Australian rules football. A what? A ruck rover. Get with the game. Lissandra calls for 14,000. Boy, Jeff surprised me there with just a smooth call. Nielsen's going to come along for 9,800 more. Well, Nielsen, playing Gus Hansen cards, likes the size of the pot. Flop is 6-4 ace. Lissandro's kings are still best. Hashem's queens are still second best. Nielsen now with a pair of fours, still third best. <laughs> Frankly, I don't think anybody really liked that flop that much. Well, Lissandro may be worried about the ace checks. Nielsen's putting some chips together, bets 22,000. Nielsen may be freezing over there, but he's got some spring to his step. Hashem with queens. Hashem is going to get out of the way. Nielsen's thinking one down, one to go. Nielsen halfway home with the bluff. Lissandra's got to worry that Nielsen raised pre-flop from early position, and he may be holding an ace. Nielsen bluffed out the queens. Can he do it to the pocket kings? Yes, Lissandra lays it down. Wow, the 31-year-old has outplayed the world champ and the player of the year again. It's getting painful. Nielsen getting used to pushing around these heavyweights. Maybe there is something to this blue jacket thing. Time now for Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net, where we find out what the pros were thinking while they were playing. In the 0-4 Tournament of Champions, Bill Hellmuth and his King-5 offsuit tangled with Howard Lederer, who had 9-8 offsuit in the big blind. The flop hits... Uh, and I have two over cards and a gut shot, so I just, you know, fired at it. Well, he's bet 15,000. He wanted to see everyone go away, but Phil has called his bet. Phil flop middle pair. He made a good call on the flop, but uh, when the six hits... Power makes the straight. But I'm feeling really good about my hand, and I'm just thinking about how to extract the most. And he's going to bet 20,000. And Phil had with a quick call. Maybe he's kind of hoping that I semi-bluffed, like, fives or deuces and then I continued on the turn and now the river card now 50,000 
The same thing that happens with the amateurs. They bet out and then they hit sixes. <laughs> when he starts insulting his opponent mid-hand, it's usually a prelude to a fault. Bill Foles, Howard takes the pot. But, you know, we always have to have some of the Phil histrionics there. I want to see that one on camera later. Don't worry, Phil. They'll definitely show that. <laughs> Any chance I get to needle Phil, uh, I'm going to have to take advantage of that. Back inside the Rio and a fairly tame Phil Hellmuth so far in this main event. But anything can happen when you put him with Josh Arie. Josh just bet 20000 into Phil after the river. Remember, Hellmuth is an equal opportunity disrespecter, amateurs and pros alike. He makes the call. Arie shows Kings up for the win. I got the guy that I gave 100 to ready to give me his money back. And you deal me King Queen and him King Jack. I don't think Phil's going to want to see this one on camera again. You think it's funny, huh? I think, you know, I think you're funny. You should enjoy it. I'm going to get you. Josh is enjoying Phil's chips. I know it. And I'm going to show you the nuts, too. This, it's going to be a big pot, though, I'll tell you that. I much. can't wait. None of us can wait. I've marked it on my calendar. <laughs> Meanwhile, at another table, that big stack belongs to Havat Khan. Just like you'll get like 30th this year or something. He finished sixth in 07. Buy that Lamborghini, I always wanted. I love the Lamborghini Murcielago Lago LP 674 SV. <laughs> That's the first real sign of life from him in two years. Meanwhile, Peter Eastgate, the defending champ, just re raised all in. Sean Craig needs only 19,000 to call him, 350,000 in the pot already. Craig makes the call to put the defending champ at risk. Trip sevens for Eastgate. Craig does not appear to like it. I sick. Craig turns over just top pair. And Craig now will need a 10 on the river and only a 10 to knock out Eastgate. The river card is a nine. That's two pair for Craig, but the trips of Peter Eastgate will take the pot. Eastgate living dangerously during much of this main event, but he's now very comfortable again. I needed the chips more than you did. <laughs> Eastgate a much more dangerous player now. <laughs> All right, let's go back to table two. It's time for the Jacklings Beef Jerky Wild Card. Him, one player's whole cards will be concealed while you at home, and Norman will try to figure out what those cards are. I know all, I tell all. Kenny Tran will start the action with Queen Deuce of Clubs, a raise to 6,400. Kenny trying to steal the blinds from the butt. Dino Bravati has the Jacklings Wild Card. Him, 36-year-old. London financial trader re-raises to 15,000. Bravati knows Tran could be making a move, so he would re-raise there with any pair or a big ace. I'll say pocket eights or ace king. Tran makes the call. They'll go heads up. The flop is 10 deuce tray, a pair of deuces for Kenny Tran. Well, you know, Kenny Tran's amazing. The hand should have been over before the flop. He should have mucked. Bravati bets 25,000. Well, if it's a big ace he has, it's a continuation bet. If he's got a pocket pair, Bravati's in good shape. And he's going to come along. Oh. Kenny thinks it's a continuation bet from Bravati. Top pro against a London amateur. Turn card, six of hearts. No help to Kenny. Bravati now bets 40,000. He's firing away like he's got a hand. How many have left? Bravati's got a little more than 100,000. Well, now's the time to fish or cut bait for Kenny Tran. Kenny's got bottom pair. A very bottom pair. <laughs> he can only continue here if he thinks Bravati's on that ace-king type of hand. Now he's going to bottom fish with those deuces and calls. Actually, he should have raised there if he thought he was on ace-king, just end the hand. River card is a five of hearts. That's a third heart on board. Plus, there's a straight draw on the board. Bravati first to act, and all the chips go oh, into the middle. Well, Kenny Tran is known for sick calls, Lon. This would be a sick call. I've got to give Bravati credit for pocket eights or better. Trent's got a pair of deuces. Bravati has let out on every street. I know he's an amateur, and we have seen preposterous plays before, but I can't believe he bet that bet and then risk his tournament on a bluff. And he's taking his time with this. Kenny's getting almost 4-1 to one on a call, but it just seems doomed if he does it. He does make the call. Moment of truth for Bravati shows pocket aces. Aces. I said pocket aces, didn't I? <laughs> Somewhere in there, I'm sure. Pocket aces. Nice hand. Thank you. Bravati never slowed down, never needed to, and wins the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand with aces. Back to the featured table where Klaus Nielsen has been the unlikely victor in a couple of big bluffs against Lissandro and Hashem. I would do it every time if I bluff. Try What's the okay. rules if you bluff, though? If you, you get caught, you lose, right? Yeah, if you get caught, you lose. Uh, this guy's not getting caught. All right. 
Nielsen looks down at 7-4. Raise it up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, now he's not going to play 7-4. Ah. Moselle gets out of the way. Bergman lays it down. Action on Hashem. Nine deuce. No thanks. Guys like Lissandro and Hashem are old school. Guys like uh, Nielsen and Mr. Dandy here are new school. Aggressive. Mr. Dandy, Paul Valkenberg, 8-6 offsuit in the small blind. See, he could just give up his small blind and Raise. move on, but no. He wants bloodshed. 26-year-old raises to 6,300. Big blind Jeff Lissandra, queen 10 off. I think Lissandra is getting a little tired of getting pushed around. And he won't be pushed off that hand. He makes the call. Battle of the blinds. This reminds me of my first honeymoon. <laughs> the flop now. Deuce 10-9. Lissandro hits a pair of 10s. Valkenberg picked up a gut shot straight draw. He checks it. Lissandra has made 13 World Series final tables, but never in a no limit hold'em event. Jeff will bet at it. 10,000 with his pair of 10s. Falkenberg now. Raise. With the gut raise. shot and a check raise to 28,000. Falkenberg stealing a page out of Nielsen's playbook. The check raise, semi bluff, but I don't think Lissandra's in the mood to get pushed around. He calls with top pair. Yes, blood will be shed. I hope not on that shirt. <laughs> All right, turn card now. Lissandra way ahead. Five of hearts. No help to Valkenberg. Lissandra, a big favorite. How much have in total? Uh-oh. Boy, Lissandro doesn't like that question. Valkenberg just on a straight draw. Well 41, bet, 41,000. Valkenberg showing that uber aggression that keeps reasonable-minded opponents off balance. But I'm telling you, Lon, I don't think Lissandro is in any mood to get pushed around. Oh, wow. Lissandro does lay it down. The player of the year is getting pushed around bluffed again. Valkenberg with a dandy of a bluff, which cuts down Jeff Lissandro's chip stack even further. Welcome back to the Rio, friends and family on the Rio, watching the action, but family ties strong in the field. Joe Seabock a bit under the weather today, but one up on his dad, Barry Greenstein. Joe's still alive in this tournament, but he's all in against Bob Dodge after the river. Oh. Dodge makes the call. Joe shows Jack's full, and he'll take the pot. No, you didn't need to take it. Barry Greenstein's known as the bear. Joe Seabock's known as the cub. I like the bear and the cub. I don't feel so sick anymore. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Joe doubles up. Over to J.C. Tran, who has outlasted his brother, Hin Tran. J.C. all in and ahead with aces up against Alex Jalali's middle pair in straight draw. Again, the dermatologist? Again. River card is a deuce, and J.C. will double up. He has had trouble getting any real momentum, but he is now up to about 200 grand. That's a boost. Oh, life. I wish to yeah. Life. We want to see that happen. I feel like I got a million right now. <laughs> One half of the Bilzerian brother tandem has been having a rough day. Dan started with over 400,000 today and could be down to less than 200,000 if he loses here. Dan needs 70,000 to call down Craig Boyd on the river. Dan is the 28 year old venture capitalist. Dan makes the call. Boyd turns over pocket aces for aces up to win the hand. Boy, 22 years old, runs an online poker training site. And indeed, after losing that hand, Dan is well under 200,000. Meanwhile, brother Adam is in a hand right now. He just got raised by Brandon Garrity, and though Adam has deuces full, he's thinking about mucking this. Adam's a 26-year-old venture capitalist. Now I'm about to flip a coin to call you right here, to be honest with you, because I could go either way. Boy, didn't we see Dan flip a coin earlier on day three? What a family. What would you say right now if I told you I had a full house? But it's real low. How would you feel about that? Garrity appears to be keeping his feelings all bottled up. You feel good, don't you? What is this, therapy? <laughs> Final call. Adam makes oh, the call. All in on 75. An excellent call as Garrity, just with two pair, will lose to the full boat. You can beat one Bilzerian, but never both. <laughs> Adam takes down a huge pot. The brothers are going in opposite directions at the moment. Thumbs up for Adam. And there is the prize everyone is after. The new owner will have collected almost 200 million chips to win that bracelet. Come on, baby. Where are your, all your brothers and sisters? Some of your brothers are over there. Some of your sisters are over there. 
Did you get any of me? No. Joe talking about trying to increase his family of chips. Well, Lissandro plays with a chip on his shoulder, so to speak. He feels he's a bit underappreciated. That's not a player of the year peak. We don't know what he has, but he did raise it to 5,500. Why does he want to show you what he has? True. Action on Joe Hashem. Speaking of family, his brother Tony got knocked out earlier on this day three. Joe with ace-queen suited. Joe picked up the expression pass the sugar from an older Greek guy he played with in the 90s who would shout it out every time he won a pot. Hashem with a re-raise to 17,000. Lissandro will not be pushed around, he calls. Can't imagine Lissandro shouting anything anytime he wins a pot. <laughs> so these two Aussies, heads up, 5-7 queen. Hashem, top pair, top kicker. In the 2005 main event, Hashem first used the term pass the sugar when he flopped a flush Three. against Andrew Black's set of queens. Of course, if the board had paired, he would have had to pass the sugar back. 32 from Joe. How much more you got, Joe? 43 which is less than 20 big blinds. What does Lissandro have that he could be asking that question? Any straight. He's going to bet enough to put hash them all in. 80,000. Joe makes the call to put himself at risk. Jeff doesn't look happy. Queens for Hashem. Pocket sixes for Jeff. Oh, wow. what, is it? what is that? Okay. Come on. I don't think he's going to yell past the sugar with Jeff around. I can't look. Joe hates to I watch the cards come late. out when he's at risk. Can't look. Okay, just deal the cards out. Lissandro not in the mood. He just wants to look. Let's see the turn. Don't do it. Turn card now is a jack. No help to Lissandro. All right. Okay. Hashem still okay. Lissandro can only knock him out with a river six. Hashem will wait for the crowd to tell him it is a nine. Hashem wins and doubles up. Pass the sugar. A misread by Lissandro cost him a bunch of chips. You scared the Jesus out of me when I saw two three-siders, Jeff. I thought you flopped the set. Lissandro is getting the worst of his Aussie rivalry. On the other side of that coin is a much stronger Joe Hashem. The World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back to the reel. The featured table is broken, and Jeff Lissandro is now out in the field after winning three bracelets this year. The now four-time bracelet winner, hoping a new table will halt his slide today. Looking at our Full Tilt Poker.net tournament ticker, we've mentioned the abundance of top players remaining. Having four bracelets certainly qualifies you for that category. Five players with four or more World Series wins are still alive in the main event. One of them, Chris Jesus Ferguson. Ferguson just put out a bet on the turn. His opponent laid it down, and Ferguson will take the pot. Oh, he had the ace of spades, the prettiest card in the deck. Elsewhere, not a world champion yet, but with seven bracelets, Phil Ivey once again jousting with Keith Lear. You know, if Ivey were a pitcher in baseball, I believe he would get a massage on the mound. Phil bet, Lear laid it down, and they pushed the pot to Ivey once again. Please bring me a donkey to my table. Norman, don't they say if you can't spot the donkey at your table, then it's probably you? <laughs> Over at Phil Helmuth's table, he's concerned there are too many donkeys in the vicinity. Moron. Apparently caught Phil in mid tirade. Alexander Kostritsen stacking Phil's chips. The guy was trying to give me all the chips, and you found a spade for him, right? And I got him just, I got the gun just pointed one more time right at him. Boom! But he's wearing a poker brat proof vest, Phil. Aria just happy to be out of Phil's crosshairs. He did hit the object of his outrage with his trademark insults, but how good would Phil's aim be in a different arena? We find out as the poker brat goes heads up with Norman Chad. If the poker world could choose someone they'd like to see in a dunk tank, it would be myself or Phil Helmuth. Congratulations, folks. Today you get both, as I'll be asking the poker brat questions as each of us sees how many throws it takes to dunk the other. Are you ready? I deserve it. Let's go. If you never win the main event again, will you be in a lousy mood when you die? I'm going to win the main event again, eventually. Too bad. <laughs> That's a bad beat. How unlucky was that? What's going on here? If there weren't any luck involved, you'd already be down. If luck weren't involved, how many bracelets do you really think you'd have? I'd have a lot of bracelets. <laughs> I could sit here all day long. <laughs> Do 
You are going down! Bring it on, Chad. You turned 45 this year. Isn't it about time to start acting like a 45-year-old? Well, I don't know. I think the young kids out there like the way I act. Which young kids? Infants? <laughs> if you ever retire, who would take over the title of Poker Brat? Well, I'm never going to retire, so that's easy. Look. Norm, I thought you liked baseball. You get me so angry. <laughs> Poker Nation rejoices! Woo! I took more pleasure out of dunking you than anything in my whole life. Those two honeymoons rolled into one. Norman, even though you look like pitcher David Wells, that had to be a cathartic moment for you, and on behalf of the entire poker world, we thank you. Nice, very nice answer. You play really well. It, it could just be me, but I detect some sarcasm there. That is short-stacked Laker guard Jordan Farmar and a hand with Tony McGlone. I'm all in. McGlone puts pressure on the Laker world champ. What would Kobe do? Farmar. He either has it or he doesn't. Mm -hmm. Got that right. You got me. I'll go ahead. Farmar does call oh. all in. All in call. McGlone shows David a set of card. jacks. Yeah, he's got him. Farmar shows just pocket nines. He's drawing dead. Jordan Farmar knocked out Sorry. of the main event. Uh, good time with you guys. Now, the poker rookie did pretty well at the main event. Farmar just learned to play Holden the day before the main event. Nice run for the kid. Let's get back to table two. Kenny Tran's table. He is sitting this one out while Devilfish and table newcomer Prahlad Friedman mix it up. Devilfish leads with kings up. Friedman has pocket queens. He checked the flop. Devilfish had called a pre-flop re-raise from Prahlad. I'm all in. After the flop now, Uliad moves all in. For 81,000. And a call here would be for most of Prahlad's chips. Got a king. Got a king. Devilfish out flopped Prahlad. It's time for Prahlad to muck. Prahlad Friedman. Thinking about it though, and he calls. And Devilfish is in great shape to double up. How do you call that pre flop? How do you call it post flop? <laughs> exactly. So Devilfish at risk, but way ahead right now. Turn card, seven of clubs. Devilfish one card from a double up. And Prahlad Friedman one card from being crippled. Prahlad can only knock out Devilfish Uliot with a queen on the river. River card. Oh, is the queen and Devilfish is gone just like that. Brutal luck for Devilfish again. Wow, how the f did you call me that? I don't know. I mean, bad call. Bad call leads to a nice pot. Neither pleased with the play of the other, but the best hand pre-flop became the best hand when it was settled. A little luck gets Friedman a lot of chips. He's up to a quarter million right now. You recall that the previous featured table broke, but Joe Hashem remains with a brand new group of players surrounding him. Joe, how come every time you raise, they all muck, and I raise, they all come in? My, pi my picture's up there. <laughs> <laughs> Joe talking with Chris Bach, 39-year-old consultant from Southern California. As play gets underway, Joe with his new group of featured table mates. Hashem, born in Lebanon, raised in Australia. Three of the last four main event winners are foreign born. Joe looks down at King Jack, suited in clubs, a raise to 8,000. Folded over to Bach. Bach also owns a used car dealership. I don't trust him. Ace, queen of spades, and the small blind. Ace, queen's a loser. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't need much help. <laughs> Hashem and Bach to the flop. Eight, do six. Box ace, queen high is still best. Who wants this pot? Nobody hit that flop. They eye each other suspiciously. Bach checks. Check by Joe. King on the turn hits Hashem. Ah, remember his picture's on the wall. Yeah, that's right. Bach checks again. Joe with a little friendly poker. Boy, I think the picture on the wall would have bet. River card now is an ace, and that hits Bach, and he gets the check mark. But the picture on the wall would have bet, and now the man at the table is not going to be happy. Bach bets 11,005. There's a message. How do you put a freaking ace out there, man? How? How is it possible for you to put an ace out there? Joe, Joe calls and loses. 
Lissandro and Hashem taking their lumps. Bach will take that pot. I just got put an ice out there. Temper, temper. Hmm. Let me get there. <laughs> ah, this is sick. Come on, hurry up and finish. I want to go home. The man with his picture on the wall is boiling over, but Joe has no one to blame but himself. Inside the Rio, signs that the main event is moving toward its conclusion, but there's plenty left to be done. This man has accomplished more than anybody else. He's the chip leader, Elke Grosbelier. Elke building a high rise. Also making a move today is Adam Bilzerian, among the top 10 chip leaders running really well. It was a good rush for me the other. It was very good. I'm going to have to take care of you, my friend. A man who was among the chip leaders on day one and could win a large pot right here if he calls and wins his hand is Jason Alexander. Christian Heisch just raised enough to put Jason all in. Heisch with a pair of sixes and a straight draw. Jason leads with pocket jacks. And Jason makes the call to put himself at risk. He is a slight favorite. Jason looked at his watch and decided it was time to call all in. He's ahead, but on shaky ground. Almost 600,000 chips in the middle. All right, the turn card is a nine of clubs. No help to Heish. Jason Alexander still good. Jason needs to dodge a deuce, five, six, or seven. And the river card is a six. Oh, and Heish spikes the trip sixes to bust Jason Alexander. Don't be sorry. They have killed Independent George. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Gentlemen, good luck. Aish now one of the top ten chip stacks. Did you hold it down? Yeah. Thanks, George. I mean, I mean Jason. Making it worse, Jason takes time out for a fan. And she calls him George. That's almost as insulting as when people call me Lon. Ouch. Well, now Jason has plenty of time to shoot that Seinfeld reunion for Curb Your Enthusiasm. Under 900 players left. Let's get back to the featured table. Joe Hashem is all smiles once again. Hashem on the Jack Link Speed Jerky Pocket Cam looks down at King Jack offsuit. Joe says when he used to take a bad beat, he would berate and belittle opponents. I think he's still fighting that nasty side of himself. A raise from Hashem to 8,000. Over to his nemesis, Chris Bach in the big blind. Five tray offsuit. Okay, Joe. <laughs> you gonna river me again? You let me get to the river. Yeah, I was trying to let you hang yourself, but I huh? hung myself. <laughs> I hung myself instead. Bach and Hashem once again. The flop is 10-5-9. Bach with a pair of fives. Hashem with a gut shot straight draw. Bach checks bottom pair. I can't, I can't afford to let you see anything like that. Joe's going to bet at 15,000. A continuation bet from Hashem. Bach calls. Well, he had called with five trays, so he's certainly going to call with bottom pair. Turn card now. Four of hearts. Hashem. Missed that. Bach still leads. And he checks again. I check. Joe checks. River card now is a Jack Hashem with the check mark. He rivered a pair of jacks. Joe should have bet just in case he hit the river. Bach checks again. Now what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? 17,000 from Joe. What is a gander? Come on, pay me off like I paid you off. All right, Joe. I'll pay you off. He's going to do it. I deserve it. it, though. I got me on the river. <laughs> Hashem gets back the chips. He sent to Bach and then some. Look at this. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I'll take it quick. Hashem suddenly in a better mood. Bach doesn't throw a tantrum. He just smiles and hands his chips over to Hashem. And even though it's been a bit of a rocky day for the former champ, he has added over 100,000 chips to his bank. Let's get to the outer tables where Hashem's fellow countryman Jeff Lissandro is putting his tournament life at risk. Just moved all in for his last 43,000 chips. He's in the hand with two other players, John Myung and Mauro Corsetti after the turn. Lissandro is down to under 15 big blinds. It has been a forgettable day for Jeff Lissandro. Myung does commit the chips to put Lissandro at risk. Corsetti folds. Time to turn him up. Myung flopped a flush. 
Pocket Kings for Lissandro. He's drawing dead and gone. And Lissandro's spectacular 2009 is over. Myung knocks off the player of the year. Jeff Lissandro came to this World Series with one bracelet. He leaves with four as his World Series has now come to an end. Day three saw some of the game's top players take center stage, but the curtain would come down early for a few. The entertainers in the field were comfortable in the spotlight, but for two, the show would go on without them. Luckily for some, their reputations and their skill carried them through. They don't want to play with me. But it was the rivalries that made things interesting. Bill Helmuth would watch Josh Arier hit the rail, while sibling rivalry remained supreme for the Bilzerians. Every single all-in I had a loss. Nobody's interested in your bad beat stories. And not only did Joe Hashem double through his countrymen, he outlasted him as Jeff Lissandro's fantastic year would finally come to an end. But this may be just the beginning for chip leader Elke Grosbelier. He's got over a million. He's looking for more. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. See you on day four from the World Series of Poker.